Start with performing an extended AC system diagnostics and inspect for general symptoms of a faulty expansion valve. Make sure you understand what causes the problem before you replace the TXV. Keep in mind, many symptoms may be consequential to other component failures. Learn the system design before the troubleshooting. There are many system designs, and symptoms may differ depending on the compressor type, number, and type of pressure sensors, and the system control type. Now you can inspect for the common symptoms of a faulty expansion valve. Poor AC system performance. Inspect if the system is capable of producing cool air in the cabin. A faulty TXV can disturb the performance of the AC system. Inconsistent airflow, the air varies between cold and warm, the system blows noticeably less cold air than before, or blowing only warm air, may link to the TXV problems. Freezing parts. Frost formation within the HVAC box, on the evaporator and TXV specifically, or frost blown from the air vents, are more symptoms of a potential TXV problem. Unmetered or restricted refrigerant flow through the vehicle's AC system often causes its parts to freeze. Improper static pressure readings. If the HP and LP side pressure readings do not equalize when the system is off, system's clogs may be the reason, and TXV is one of the potential spots where they occur. Improper working pressure readings. Depending on the system's design, too high or too low working pressure readings may be a sign of expansion valve malfunction. Normal gauge readings should be between 2 and 3 bar on the LP side and 14 to 24 bar on the HP. Improper superheat temperature at the evaporator's outlet. The superheat valve measured at the evaporator's outlet can help you conclude whether the TXV, thus the system, operates optimally. Link the temperature readings with refrigerant respective pressure temperature table. Compressor short cycling. Impaired refrigerant flow caused by the TXV failure affects the proper pressures causing the symptom. Excessive temperatures of the loop components. When generated at some of the loop components can be linked to a faulty or blocked expansion valve. To conclude a TXV-related issue, inspect the high-pressure loop side from the condenser outlet and to the expansion valve for outer temperatures above 50 Celsius, 122 Fahrenheit. System inner impurities, particles, debris, impurities, as well as improper use of additives such as leak stop, UV dye, can lead to flow restrictions within thin passages of the TXV. Blockages of improper metering may be consequential to contaminants. Now, when you know the root cause of the problem and if it links to the TXV, you can proceed with a valve replacement. Evacuate the system. Find access to the valve. When the system is completely evacuated, you can start dismantling the valve. Make sure to localize all the connection's seals. They will have to be replaced for all the ducts that were dismantled in the process. Compare the original part with the replacement. Make sure you will be replacing the faulty valve with an exact equivalent. Besides basing on the valve's OE number, Measure its inlets and outlets. Prime the seals before fitting. Lubricating the O-rings prior to installation ensures they seal the coupling properly. Now you can fit the new expansion valve. Remember to correctly fit all the dismounted ducts and brackets within the TXV area. Handle the threads properly and avoid stripping. For the screws tightening torques, refer to the vehicle's documentation. Now you can control the system. 
make sure it is leaked proof before it charges with refrigerant. When it is tight and charged, its operation must be tested. Once the entire loop is reassembled, make sure it is tight. The most reliable and common method for doing this is a long-term pressure test performed by means of nitrogen. Depending on the tools you have, support the pressure test with possible leaks tracking. Apply an electronic leak detector sensitive to the applied test gas. Repair any leaks if found and repeat the test until it passes. Now the loop can undergo the last service procedure before we charge it with the refrigerant. Vacuum facilitates the charge process, but most importantly, it eliminates any ambient air moisture that may be still left inside the loop, as well as controls, once again, the system's tightness. Select the appropriate charge program preceded with a minimum 30-minute vacuum. After the system vacuum has been pulled successfully, the next step is to charge the system. Make sure you charge the loop with the refrigerant type and amount prescribed by the manufacturer for the specific car model. Now start the car and perform a practical test of the AC system to see whether it operates and properly performs after the service. Inspect the system operational pressures. The test will confirm whether the TXV and the AC compressor operate properly and are able to build up and maintain the necessary pressures in the loop. Run the final OBD diagnostics to track and clean possible HVAC system-related faults registered. Finally, inspect whether the system can produce cold air within the operation modes commanded from the control panel. Keep in mind, a properly operating expansion valve is key for the system vital and trouble-free operation. For more information and technical guides related to the AC system service, visit our website.